Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Hernandez, and in this series, I'm going to be teaching you how to make Pong in Game Maker Studio 2. When approaching any game engine for the first time, it's always a good idea to begin by developing a very simple game just to learn the basics of the, of the engine. Pong is a great game to begin with, as it makes use of various mechanics that can easily carry over into almost any game that you want to make, such as keyboard movement, score, collision, and so on. So I've already got Game Maker Studio 2 open here. I'm going to go ahead and get started by clicking new here to create a new project. And then here we've got two different options for how we can make our game. The first is drag and drop. This is what it sounds like. If you ever use Scratch, it's very similar to that, where you drag and drop stuff around to get your game to work the way you want it to. Game Maker language is a programming language that was developed specifically for Game Maker. It's very similar to programming language such as JavaScript and Python. And anything you learn here using Game Maker language, you can easily carry over to those languages. So for that reason, we're going to use Game Maker language today. I'm going to name my project Pong. And I'm going to leave it to this folder that it automatically set. Because for me, that's fine for now. So I hit save and we'll get started. So this is Game Maker Studio 2. This is what the interface looks like. Right now, there's really nothing much going on because we haven't added anything yet. Uh, so let's get started. Before we can begin actually developing the game, we're going to need some art assets to work with. Game Maker allows users to load in pre-existing assets that you've made in this program, such as uh, Photoshop or Paint, or maybe you bought them off the internet. Uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to make use of Game Maker's built-in image editor. So first thing we can do is come over to this sprites drop-down here on the resources panel on the right side of the screen and click create sprite. So here we're going to give our sprite a name. I'm going to name it SPR underscore paddle. So I'm using this SPR prefix as it's an abbreviation for Sprite. And the reason I'm using this is because we're going to have other things inside our game that might have similar names to the sprites that we're making. Uh, for example, later we're going to have objects with similar names to our sprites. Um, and I'm going to differentiate between the two with the prefixes. Because if you give two different uh, a sprite or an object the same name, a game maker might get confused later on. Um, I don't want that to happen, so I always differentiate with a prefix. So this is going to be our paddle, and you see this is what our sprite looks like right now. So we'll see by default it's a square, it's 64 by 64. Um, and there's no color to it, so right now it's transparent, that's why you see this checkerboard here. Uh, but it, this is going to be our paddle, so we need it to be long. We need it to look like what the paddle looks like in Pong. So I'm going to do that by clicking this icon here to resize it. So here I'm going to re I want to resize our paddle to 24 pixels by 72. You'll notice here if I type in 24 here and if I click here, it's going to automatically set that to 24 because right now maintain aspect ratio is set. So it started off as a square, 64 by 64. So with this set, it's going to want to keep it as a square. So we'll unclick this and now we can change our height to anything that we want. So I said I wanted 24 by 72. So let's go ahead and do that. We click apply and you'll see that. It made the change to our sprite. So I'm going to zoom in so we can get a better look here. Uh, but it's still transparent. So I'm going to click Edit Image here. And this is going to open up Game Maker's Image Editor. So you'll see it's very similar to other image editors you might use, like Paint or something. Um, so I'm going to stick with the classic Pong colors, black and white. So white's already here as my, my primary color. So I'm going to click this Paint Bucket here to fill our paddle with the color white. And I can click this X here, and it'll automatically save our changes. Now, there's one more thing that we have to do here, and that's, you'll notice this crosshair here. This is what's called the origin. So calculations um, of rotation and position will be made from this point. So if we were to rotate this sprite in our game, it would rotate about this point right here. So it would rotate around there. But we can change this. You can click anywhere to change it. Or if you want to be precise, you can come to this drop down here and set it with these options. I'm going to click middle center. So it's in the very center of this sprite. And you can close this or you can just do the same thing we did to create that sprite. Come back to sprites, right click, create sprite. And the next sprite we're going to make is SPR underscore ball. This is going to be our ball for the game. Um, for size, it's also it's going to stay a square so we can keep this maintain aspect ratio. But I'm going to set it to 32 by 32. Just make it half of what it currently is. Click apply. You'll see that it shrunk. 
I accidentally clicked and moved the crosshair there, but it's fine because I'm just going to click set it to middle center. Um, come back to edit image and then fill it white. And close this. Now there's one more sprite that we're going to need and you might not be able to tell what it is right away. Uh, but when during the game, our ball is going to need to bounce when it hits the edge of the top and bottom edge of the screen. And the way I'm going to do this in this tutorial is I'm going to make a, a wall sprite. So we're going to do SPR underscore wall. And then this one, for this, I'm going to keep the origin at the top left because it doesn't really matter to me. I'm going to keep the size the same, but I'm going to set it a different color because right now it's a square. I don't want to get confused later on between my ball and my wall. So I'm going to give it a color that's different than what I've been using. And I'm going to do red. We're not going to see this sprite in the game, so it really doesn't matter what color you give it for, but I'm just going to give it red so that it stands out and it's clear that it's different than the rest of the sprites. So there it is. We've got all our sprites. You can scroll up to see, see them all. And this button here is what allows us to play our game, to run the game. So we can click it right now to see what happens. It's going to take a while to load, especially if this is your first time running the game, trying to run the game. Okay, so it's finally loaded. And you'll see after we get that Game Maker Studio logo, it's just a black screen. So there's nothing in our game because we haven't placed anything yet. And this black screen that we're looking at right now, I'll show you, is this room. So come over to this room and double click it. So this is this is what our game really looks like right now. It's just this black screen um, that's called a room. Game Maker Studio refers to levels. What we would think as levels are called rooms in Game Maker Studio. So by default, we get a room. It's called Room Zero. You can leave it as is if you'd like. Uh, you can leave the name as is. But I'm going to change the size of the room um, because right now it's a little big. So I'm going to change it. And our sprites are small. So I'm going to, to, to resolve any problems that might come up later. I'm going to change it to 640 pixels by 480. You'll see it changes as I type those. So now we've got a much smaller, much smaller room. And so before we can place our sprites in here, our sprites need to be objects. So it's important to understand that sprites aren't necessarily what we see in the game. Sprites are just the containers for images. They hold images. So we put each of our sprites has an image that we've attached to it but it doesn't do anything. There's no code attached to these sprites. The way we attach code to sprites, is we make objects and then we're going to link these objects. We're going to link those sprites to these objects. So by doing this, you'll see this right now it says no sprite. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click paddle and then we'll call this obj underscore right paddle. This is going to be our right paddle. And then we do the same thing for the left paddle. Create a new object, obj underscore left paddle. And then once again, I'm going to click right here where it says no sprite. Click these three dots and then select our paddle sprite, SPR paddle. And now that sprite is linked to both of these paddles, both of these objects. One sprite can be linked to multiple objects, but an object can only have one sprite linked to it, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, it might make sense later. And then there's going to be, I need to add objects for the ball and for the wall. So I'm going to come here, right click, create object, obj underscore ball. There's my ball sprite, the white one. And then one more, obj underscore wall and select the wall sprite, which is going to be the red one. All right, so now that we've done that, inside inside our room, we can click and drag these objects to place them in the, in the room. So oops, that's the right paddle, so I should move it there. And then here's going to be the left paddle on the left side of the screen. 
Just try to place my ball as close to the middle as possible. I'll show you how to get more precise with this in a second. I'll show you right now. So you'll notice this grid icon right here. You can click it on and off to toggle the grid. And right now, our objects are set to snap to this grid. But our grid is kind of big right now. It's 32 by 32. So I'm going to change this to 16 by 16. And you'll notice our grid gets smaller. So now we can be more precise. So because we've got more, more grids, more squares in our grid. All right, that looks good enough for me for now. And then, so our wall, we still got to place our wall. So I'm going to grab it. Place it out just outside the room so the players won't see it in the game. And I'm going to hover on the right edge of it. You'll see the mouse icon will change to this, these arrows. Click and drag just so it fills the whole top edge. And then do the same thing at the bottom. So we can have multiple instances of each object in the game. So there we go. There we have it. And then if I run the game now, should be faster now that we've done we ran it once already okay so we got the game maker studio logo and then now we see we see our sprites in the game as objects and you'll notice we can't see our wall even though it would be like around up there and down there so it's just outside the game window so we can't see it uh, so there you have it there we've got We've created art assets, our sprites, we've attached them to objects, and we've placed our objects inside our room to display them on the screen. Um, so that's that's gonna be the end of this part, this episode of the series. Um, the next episode, we're gonna learn how to how to add code to our objects to make them move around and like add some functionality to the game. So thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you in the next episode.